another session uh, uh, from IFA. IFA stands for AI for Academics Forum. Uh, or forum for Today we have, uh, I can't remember the number, special number, but uh, we started as I was reporting uh, about July last year. And uh, today we have a session on teaching and learning at the time of AI uh, from a very resourceful resource person, uh, Dr. Daniel Vigasuriya. Uh, he's going to talk about how or, or show you and uh, also take you through the steps in how we can use AI, uh, particularly in the age of generative AI on how to do uh, teaching and learning. But if that's what I do, I'll ask Dr. Uh, Vigasuriya. Okay, thank you, Roshan, and good evening, everyone. And uh, just before starting this one, I heard the news from Professor Roshan that they had another update, update of Chat GPT. But unfortunately, I am still using the basic one, but he has the access. So uh, it can remember you according to him. It can remember you and it can. Uh, memorize the previous trip. So, if it works properly, I will understand it. Uh, I think it will deal with you on a very personal basis also. Right. So, to start with, uh, I have put a little bit all the news. I think uh, it was shared in our WhatsApp group also a few weeks back. Right. That Chat GPT in the plus version, it has proved that it can come in the 90% percentile uh, passing the bar exam. I mean, it was 10 percent, and in the recent development, it has it, it has the ability to even pass the low exam. And also, some of you may remember I have shared. And a few months, few weeks back, uh, ChatGPT, the very basic version, it will be successfully answering all the questions in the, uh, the paper by CDC. Right? So, I think we are living in a time where we have to rethink our way of looking at things. So, rather than having a presentation, I would like to making some opinion share because even after the last session I had the big argument with Ruanta about using AI in humanities or whether we should test the memory, memorizing capabilities or analytical abilities. So I hope that debate will continue today as well. Um, this is a rough plan for today. We have two hours. Um, but I will try to bypass it. Okay. <coughs> so what is AI? AI or artificial intelligence is the simulation of human intelligence in machines. As you already know. AI enables computers to perform tasks that typically require human intelligence, such as problem solving, learning and decision making. Is there anything wrong? Is there anybody thinks is, is there anything wrong? In this presentation? From uh, did you yes. train it yourself? Like, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like the main problem with any problem is not recognizing the problem. And this is how I generated that slide. So, <laughs> this is what is happening. Earlier, thanks to the technology, we were going through this thing. Sometimes, a lecturer who don't know anything about the subject can do a presentation by preparing a slide then. Really neat. So, I was also speaking that slide. And this is uh, happening. Worst thing is happening in schools at the moment. I'm not talking about AI, but with the introduction of IT, sometimes now we see they copy the textbooks on the PowerPoint slides and print. So I think 
it is a time for a good debate, what should actually happen? Right? So basically, any of you can uh, you know, today try. There are various ways of doing this. For example, although chat GPT is not directly supporting PowerPoint, I can do it like this, copy and paste. Is the last version has the but in Google Slides, now they have some plugins where you can select it and then generate slides. Right? You can give the topic. If you want, you can see it. Only thing is, uh, and this is the free version of a plugin, and now my credits are over. So, uh, these kind of things are happening. And even these pictures, which I am using in my slides, I think last week you had a very nice person, last session you had a very nice presentation by Dr. Damayanti, how to generate images. <coughs> and most of this, I like this blackboard concept. So I wanted to generate blackboard type images for my presentation. And by prompting, I generate them. Okay. So, I think you can replace because initially this statement came for statistics, then for IT, and now for AI. They say many users AI in education in the same manner a drunkard uses a language. For what? Not for illumination, but to hang on. Right? So as a result of that, most of these uh, what we call as teaching aids, right? especially after this uh, recent revolution of AI, many teaching aids are now becoming teacher aids. You know the difference? If I can't do a lecture properly, I can base my lecture on the slide, set of slides and begin. That's it. Okay, so we are going to talk about this in this context, but this is my lesson plan today. I'm going to only focus on two main problems categories because there are there are a lot of things that you can discuss. But I would like to focus on uh, one problem from data science and machine learning. And also another thing that many people will are asking is, is AI data science or AI machine learning, what is the difference? Actually you can't have some hard boundaries like that. And when you go through some of the exercises today you will see, are there anyone from the STEM department? They will feel, okay, this is not AI, this is statistics. Yes, I think. Some significant amount of AI is based on stat principles. And then we have now with the chat GPT and all those things, we have this natural language processing abilities. So I will focus on those two areas. Okay. Before going into that, let's have a let's continue that debate. Right, for five minutes. What I did early, is it a good thing or bad? Preparing slides using chat GPT. So I need to have a opinion. Okay, you can discuss. Then I will I will uh, ask some of you to answer. You can discuss among yourselves. Right? Then I will ask you to come in. First, discuss among yourselves. Not only PowerPoint slides, you can prepare a lecture notes. Okay.
to discuss about what the power of what we are doing. Now you remember you answered to 14 questions. 
So those four key questions, I have mapped to three axes using some statistical analysis method. Some of you may know about principal components. So those are the axes. But anyway, today we are going to uh, do one exercise on this. And you are going to do it. Because I find uh, everyone talks about chat GPT and all those things. But there is some part in AI or machine learning especially coming from machine learning side and data science part. Which can be very useful in our teaching process. So first I want to have some hands on experience on that. And as you can see when you map them into three axes, 35, number 35 is, I'm sorry for uh, <laughs> revealing the identities because I promised in the question uh, your identities will not be revealed. But this is not the thought of that mark. So, uh, it's Kalpati and he had a totally different answers than the others. When I go and check. Especially here we have only 51 members answering. But if it is a large class like our first year students where you have 455, identifying students with different behaviors can be done using this tool, which is some basic tool used in machine learning and AI, data cluster. So first I thought of talking about that and then doing something. And if I name Janapur, he is a little guy, that means like most of the others. But then we have one exception, Ruanda. <laughs> totally different from others. And you can even understand that by looking at the <laughs> Then Tilak, I don't know. And Hasini, right? He's in the different world there. Yeah. So, uh, can't we use this to recognize different students? So, that will be my first focus point. Now, what do you mean by university education? Or generally education? <laughs> Many people can give different uh, interpretations. And many people have given interpretations in the past. Now one of the latest is uh, Professor Lian Giamatti has written one whole book which was read by many among the university community about what is university education. But before that, many people have made comments. I will start with some joke. <laughs> but before going into what they have said, you can have a small dialogue again among yourself. What do you actually mean by university education? What is the final objective? Right. Because without that basis, I don't think any technology is going to help us. Because what should happen is anything which comes in that way should help us in achieving that objective.
This until we understand the kind of thing, uh, it will be, it is going to be successful. Now, for example, there are a lot of uh, myths about university education and general education. For example, it should be targeting a job. Or oh, one blame comes to I know for oh, humanities, how many humanities? Now, for example, one thing I have heard many times is why aren't they producing any dramas and making any songs and things like that? So, what I ask is they are not artists, right? they are doing uh, some sort of study on the field that they have selected. Doing a drama is a separate thing. Can a task be at their point? So they have to do a critical evaluation of arts or whatever. The subject that they are doing. Not anything else, I think. Anyway, these are some of the first one is actually a talk I found on the web. Universities are full of knowledge. The freshmen bring a little bit. The seniors take none away and the knowledge they have in it. Maybe true, maybe false. But let us turn to Professor Sarat Chandra. You have seen one of his documentaries, I have the video. He says, a university should not be a place where a student only reads the lecture on study, sit for the exam and get the degree. It should be a place where students and teachers collaboratively explore the universe. So we specifically use the word universe. Right. And universe is what? Understanding maybe what's happening around us and so many things. And this collaborative attempt. Similarly, I don't know exactly whether this was said by Einstein because there are a lot of uh, statesmen to his name, but I like this. Education is not the learning of facts, it is the rather the training of the mind to think. Right? Again, we are coming to memory and memory. And this is from one big guy in the IT field. Technology is just a tool in terms of getting the students to work together and inspiring them. PK is more important. Right. But sometimes if you carefully analyze what we are doing most of the time, is we make them think in a certain pattern. So we have to ask, I'm not telling any answers here. Right? That means I can't tell whether it is wrong or right. It may depend on the field of subjects that you are teaching. For example, if you are teaching medical science, you can't allow much innovations like when they do surgery. So there are differences like this. Right. This is one of the things which I mostly like. What I mean by education is recognition of potential of each student and helping them to improve. Now, how are we going to do this in a big class where there are <laughs> hundreds of students staring at us? We can't personally recognize them. So, one area where AI can be very useful is analyzing students using the AI data science and machine learning tools and at least try to get some idea about them. So I think uh, next, the first thing that we are going to do is we get some idea about that. Now this is what I have shown earlier. Where I have mapped the answers for 14 questions into three answers. And here you can see there are certain groups of students directly by looking at this also. You can observe it by applying some AI tools like clustering. It can automatically identify groups of students. And uh, we will do that. It, it is more, I mean, this is the normal language that we do for questionnaires. But this doesn't convey much information. But if you take it into something like this, we can see now this is Kalpani. And 
you are going to know about this plant. And in doing that, I know that those who are doing statistics and AI and uh, machine learning subjects know that this can be done with uh, tools like uh, packages like R. If you are using an what uh, is Python, MATLAB, all those things. But since I have to plan this for a class where some general audience is there. I thought of okay, finding a software and learning it myself first. So to find that also I got the help of AI. Right? And finally I found some good software. It's not the software, it is online site where you can analyze your data. There are a lot of good sites. I was allowed to see some of the things that we spend a lot of time in analyzing. Sometimes you can just copy and paste your data and get the results. Right? So since it is a general audience, we will use such a tool and see whether we can get the graph like this. Now here I am putting a dot corresponding to, and now you have access to this. I don't know what is that piece. Yeah, I'll explain. Uh, so what, what actually happens is, now you have answered 14 questions. And all the 14 questions have a particular variance with it. Or standard deviation or whatever. And this is the method where we try to, uh, I can't use engineering words here. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you later. But this is the method of transforming your data set so that you can visualize it to axis like this. So that the variance is preserved. The percentage is telling you how much of the total variance of the data is coming to that axis. And this says the other axis. Earlier I, I was showing three axes, but in this software you, are, you can only see two axes at the time. But that also can help. So using this diagram, we can identify groups of students. I have done this for the practical for the students. And for example, based on their answers to the questions in the exam. For example, I will show you one slide. Let's say we have 10 questions in the exam paper. And we know. Now what we do is we give marks and then get the total and get the average. And that will represent the student. The marks that he get for that particular subject. And that is what we analyze or represent it. He has A plus, A, A minus and so on. But what I have observed is there are some students who don't get A plus, but they are really good when it comes to certain aspects. I can give one good example. If you take, uh, I don't know whether if I tell this name, it will recall something. Tanya Daya. He was the guy who became famous after doing the, I think, second satellite. Right? First satellite was sent by Titi. <laughs> second satellite. But well, actually, he designed the first satellite. So, uh, he was a student of our faculty a few years back. And I remember, in the exams, for a particular subject, which is directly related to what he was doing in Japan, he got the B plus or something. But when it came to the practical component of that subject, I, I personally told him, I don't have more marks to give you right? because he has done it to that level. But when it comes to the total, he got a B plus because there were many examiners and when the final total came, he was a normal student. But from that aspect, <coughs> he was really, really good. So it can't be put all those different marks, let's say 10 questions, 10 marks, or practical component, design, Various things are there, and then map it to axis like this. We can identify certain student groups, and uh, personally, I think today. Sometimes they may be the weak, weaker student. Sometimes it can be showing a very good characteristic in them, so that they 
<coughs> they are very good in uh, for higher studies. Like we find some students, they sometimes get the normal questions wrong, but the difficult ones they do. So all these things we can get an idea. Not only that, if you go to reverse this, so we will do that also. I can analyze the questions also. Now these are representing the 14 questions. Now some of you have even commented about the questions there. Now we can identify the groups of questions. Some questions are not needed even. Now for example, if you see that plot, maybe giving one question from that may be enough to you. Rather than doing 14 questions, I can have one, two, three, four questions or five questions and test them the same way. Right. So questions also you can analyze. Uh, students also you can analyze using some of these tools. So to do this, yeah, the same type of. And this another useful diagram I will come to this later. Here using this is called as a heat map, right, which is again used in data science. You can identify group. Now for example, let's say I want to make groups of, of this class. Right? And I can identify students with similar qualities. And if I want, I can group them together. Or I can take one from this group, one from that group and make group a diverse group. Right? So all these things are possible if you go for this. So we will first do it and then discuss. Okay, uh, to do this, I have selected, there are many better tools, but I have selected this which is a very simple one, uh, which is called as plus twist. So you can go to the computer and search for this. C L U S T. PIS. I also so when I search, I got this. And there were some better tools, but unfortunately, after a few days, they are asking for money. So if you are rich, if you are rich, uh, you, you have better tools. And also, other option is learning packages like R. Then you have everything there. For free. Let's see what happens. For those who 
quality. Uh, right? There is an option for giving data. One is load sample data or upload file or base data. So this will be much easier here. You have this data file in the folder that I have shared on WhatsApp today. Can you get that? They copy the data set and just paste there. I had to get Can you get So please look, I will be repeating it. When you go to data import, you get this one. So if you want to upload the file, you can click here, and click browse and upload if you have downloaded it already. But this is more easy. You go to the paste data, go to your file, select everything, copy. Just control me. Thank you. 
Right. There's a good news also. Uh, now it seems we don't, we no longer want to use this different different software to do this kind of thing. Uh, in the latest versions of ChatGPT, you can just paste the data on the ChatGPT window. You can import that file. Import it. Yes. You can import the file and then ask any question that you like from ChatGPT. You can just tell cluster data or you can just tell what you want. I have tried it in the basic version. Then there is an interesting thing happening. They don't directly give me the results, but they tell me how to do it. And even they give me a Python code. You run this Python code uh, in the Jupyter or wherever. And then you can get the same dialogue. So at least that help is there. So we will see that also later. I mean using that TV. So now you can take this. This diagram and previous diagram. And then comes the most important one, the speed map. I will go back to the original one. Right. So this one diagram you get. Now you can group the students. Right? Just by manual inspection, you can see these two are very close. So I can group them together. No, actually these are students, these are questions. So these two questions are very close. These two questions are a little bit closer. I can take this bunch and if I want to get the bigger group, like this. So there is a technique like this, uh, where you start with the closest uh, points and keep on building the clusters and you don't have to do it because that tool is also available there. And using that, you get what you call as the heat mess. So let me go back here. Click on this heat map. Not click, because nothing will happen in your machines. Uh, just watch. But if you are familiar with other softwares, you can easily get this from them. Here I, I wanted to select a free, easy to use one. Right. So this is the best I found. And on this side, you have the people, 53 people, and on this side we have the questions. Let's see the question. Now for example, here it is grouping these two first, right? maybe question number 3 and question number 4. If you go and analyze those questions, sometimes they may be very close questions. Right? This doesn't have any idea about what are the questions. But if you go to that and analyze what is your question number 3 and question number 4, which I have given, they may be same. Oh, as one of you have commented, I don't have any idea about this question. So I have just sent that somewhere. Right. So you can identify such things in the questionnaire. And then another group is here, group of 2. And then you can see this third one is getting connected to these two. So like that, you can have groups of questions and also on this side you can have groups of people. For example, if you want to divide the task into two major groups, I can easily say this part as one group and this part as another group. So the, their names are, or the numbers are here. Right. Now for example, let's be 35. But anyway, you can divide them into two. If you want to further subdivide them into two, you can divide it like this. And have, for example, uh, something like student tailored lesson theory techniques. 
For example, your lessons will be different for different students. Now what you, I should have done here is, rather than speaking to all of you, I could have divided you according to this. And unfortunately we don't have only one support group. Right? So uh, we could have attended them separately, right? which may be much beneficial for them depending on their level of knowledge. So like that, my final message is, using these techniques, I have demonstrated only two techniques. Using the techniques available in that side of AI, which is mainly coming from data science and machine learning, you can identify students with different personal behaviors, right? personal needs, rather than treating them on the summarized marks, like what we do at the moment. Right? For example, we say, those who are think <coughs> C may be weaker student. Yes, but sometimes they may be strong in a particular area. So we can deliver lessons targeted at that day. Right, so let's go back to the presentation. Okay, so this is something from my actual exam results. In that particular paper, I had four questions. When I use the normal analysis, this is what we do. We find each question, how easy it is and so on. But when I walk, go to here, I can get a better understanding of the students. Here I have used the AI technique or machine learning technique to color them using different colors. And then I take all the students who are staying away from the rest and see, sometimes it may be a weak student, sometimes it may be a very good student who need different attention. Yes. Uh, are these MCQs or SA type? It's SA for MCQs, you have different techniques. Uh, here you get marks from out of 25 for each question. So that is one side. And then you can do more interesting things. Right? So these are some of the things that you may have already observed at the moment thanks to AI. For example, how many of you are watching Netflix? So, it seems, if you are interested about a particular movie, or even not a movie, something, next day you are suggested the uh, movie of that kind. I don't know some of the things how it happened. For example, recently I have watched none to Hindi. Right? I don't know how my information has gone there. Maybe my location. I don't know. Next day I started getting a lot of suggestions about horror films. Maybe only way that they can know that I have gone to uh, KCC film hall is my location. Is that any other possibility? Book the ticket online? No. <laughs> we bought it over the counter. But how do they know me? Maybe you search something for it. Yes, that may be the thing I guess. Okay, so, things are pretty light. Now here, how do they do that? Now for example, you may have seen this even in Amazon. If you like a particular book, they start suggesting you books. Can that technique use for exam duration? Now here what I see is, on this side you have the viewers. On that side, movies, and on the table what you have is their preference, maybe 1 to 5 scale. Right? From each viewer you are getting a preference. Now if you take this table and put it there, you can identify certain clusters in the viewers as well as movies. Same as the questions and the people. Right? And then what, you, what they do is, they map us people in this particular group like the movies in this particular group. Yeah. Same way, can't we do it for exams? I mean, questions. I don't know whether you 
have heard, there are a lot of advanced test mechanisms in the world. What do you call it? Computer. Adaptive. That means you go to an exam. I think site exam uses that. Many exams in the world you see. You don't get the same paper. Right? First they fire a question at you. You give the answer. Based on that, they fire another question. Within around 10 questions, you can tell much. So there are a lot of techniques behind these things like now, what we are using at the moment for this kind of thing is called as non-negative matrix factorization, some mathematical pattern. But a lot of techniques are there, they count as just toolboxes. So if you are not uh, familiar with mathematics, thanks to AI, sometimes they will come as analysis tool. For example, you can put this table to that, that tool that I have demonstrated and see whether you can pass to this and pass to this and map this. Right. So, that is one side. As I said, Netflix, Google and many places you see, but you can use it for AI. So, this is the second part. So, first I, I took examples from data science. Now, let us focus on Hype these days. Like many people got attracted to AI because all these techniques that I have shown there were there for maybe three, four decades. Right? In step 10, it has been absorbed to AI. But this thing is rather new, generative AI. The basic idea is it's like, how can I explain? Some sort of trial and error. Right? Let's get back to the session that was conducted last session. How to draw a picture or what, what they are doing. Right? One basic idea is you take an image as an inspiration, blur it and then generate many images out of it, random. And then there is some guy there to check, tell you whether that is a good image or bad image. So they do it repeatedly. That's the main idea about some of the things. In the same thing happens for natural language processing also, where they will take out one word and try to generate words there, and then there is some guy to evaluate it. That's the simplest way I can explain it. So anyway, using GenAI, it has totally revolutionized the many, many fields. Um, Okay, I think I have shared this song with you. I want to show the pictures I have generated. This was completed and using AI. If you like, uh, you can go to the WhatsApp page and read this there. You can I'll show you the prompt I use. This the final picture I got. And this is a different version of this. Because I want the person to generate some old person. But then it was too old. So by changing prompts. I managed to make it more uh, younger, in the, as you have seen in the videos. Uh, so this is the prompt I use. I use the word rusty. You know what is rusty. Actually, this is also fun thing. One of my main hobby these days, giving different prompts and generating. Rusty all transparent. Couple playing a sitar. That is the only thing that I have given about them. Perfect center, track background, texture, past background, for order, award winning, thought provoking, scattered like these things you have to find this in your own experiment. Hyper detail, highly detail, things like that. 
In addition to that, it doesn't grow a couple playing sitar like this if you just put that thing. I have sketched one myself and give that as an inspiration of the image. Right. So, sometimes if you are really lucky, you will get what you want. But you have to sometimes support it. So, if you can sketch even nothing, you can do it. Then, uh, of course, we have to try several times, maybe 10 times, 12 times, I don't know. Until you get. So, we are also, we also have to be like generative AI. Right? Generative AI and generative human. This, until what we get, uh, we try to get. So, I hope in future, they will be capable of giving exactly what we want. Maybe read the mind, right? read the mind of the artist and give what exactly they want. But by experimenting, you can, I think, learn something. There are no specific prompt that you can give because these are based on random numbers. So if you give the same prompt again, you will get a different number. If you don't uh, select the correct scene. Not only painting. The University of Peradinia strives to embrace the ever evolving world and modern technology while staying firmly rooted in its rich traditions. A testament to this commitment is showcased through the theme song created for the university's 80th anniversary. This remarkable composition I'll tell you how, how this song is produced. What are the inspirations? And human creativity. The song's captivating melody is generated by an advanced AI algorithm while its lyrics are skillfully crafted by a human. The music is then composed with human intervention resulting in a harmonious blend. To bring this creation to life, a duet performance featuring both a human singer and an AI bomb was recorded. The lyrics, music composition and accompanying video for this exceptional piece were brought together by Dr. Janika Vijayakurusudhya from the Department of Electrical and Electronical Engineering at the University of Peradeniya and partially sung by Ms. Isuri Diyavadana from the Department of Fine Arts at the same university. And if I tell a little bit about how this happened, at this request, or we decided to make a song for this at the last moment. Uh, when I think of the Samhita came to, I mean, they did want the song at the beginning, but when in our discussion with you all that, okay, we will make a song. And then what happened was, there was no time to make a melody. So, at that time I was experimenting with the software called a song art. It's available, anybody can write the song and experiment with that, but unfortunately, about a few weeks back, they also became commercialized. So now you can do one song per day, but that's enough. You know, one song per day. Really they will allow you around five, ten songs. So you can experiment and get the best melody, but now it's like that. Like you can search and go, not here. Right? Uh, Songart.com. And when you give the lyrics, you can get different uh, flavors like rock music, pop music, and so on. So that's how the song was prepared, and then they have AI want to sing the song. But then the problem is the music they are producing is not good. Because it's a very complex algorithm. Even text to speech took long time to come to the level it is today. And text to music is something out of the world. So uh, what I did was using another AI software, I have separated the voice and music and took only the voice part and throw away the music generated by the AI. And then I composed my own music on that. Right? And after that, 
I thought, okay, it's good if a uh, human can see this, rather than this AI world, because I usually don't like the AI words. Because they are not emotional. I'll show a good example later. One of the main problems with this kind of things are they don't have a feeling at all. I don't know in future whether <laughs> do it. At the moment, as far as I know, maybe they can. Emotional tears. So then what happened was uh, one one from like five months I came to sing this song. She's a great day singer in the SLBC. But on the last day evening, she gave me a call and told so I can't come, my grandmother passed away. So I was in shock because I can't just put the artificial song for that ceremony. Then finally found another one. And she came around at 8 p.m. in the night and recorded that and interview one, one, one recording, right? That's why some pitching are out. And uh, finally managed to finish the song by the morning next day. Right. So, just some of you may have heard it. So, this music part is. Most of them are human. This part is synthesized. This vocal part.
we can try it with the later version of ChatGPT, but basic version fails. Because it can't identify the hidden meaning in that point. Right? So finally we came to the conclusion that we should encourage or we should always use poems or literature of that nature so that we can be clear. Right? Otherwise, what will happen is students will use it and write their nice reviews. And then they have developed some tools for that. I think you told me, who did it? Zero, zero GP, right? To identify whether you have done something with chat GP, that's the website. There's some website right, to identify whether you have done something using ChatGPT. But now there are ways of even bypassing it. Right? So if you go and search how to bypass uh, ChatGPT checkers, they, they will tell you enough sites. Okay, as the next exercise. Uh, before that, when the chat GPT came last year, this was the situation all around the world. Now also, it's still going on. Many universities, they are debating whether to ban it or stop students using it. Right? I'm pretty sure in some faculties, I don't know, you can do 95% of the assignments using this. <coughs> So, but then they decided to go again with that. And also, this made the revolution in the world that we began, then they have been competitive. But you can see, Netflix took 3.5 years to reach 1 million users. Whereas, then the others like Kickstart, they have been doing Twitter, Facebook, Facebook also took 10 months. And ChatGPT within five years, uh, it reached there. Right? So, okay, the next exercise is there are three different exercises in the sheet given in the uh, Google folder. There's a document there, actually. And please attend to it. First one is reviewing a song. Using chat GPT. So I hope that you all know how to go to chat GPT. So just let's see whether you can get a good review where you get the meaning of that song. I don't know for this also whether the nature. There are three files. I am preferring this file. Right? First you have the song. The basic thing you can do is just copy this and paste on chat GPT and say review. That's it. And see what you are going to get. Then you can give your own interpretations and see what the chat GPT is doing. I just wanted to demonstrate with little bit help from you, sometimes chat GPT also can make a good review of that.
you can continue with Google also. Or you can take your phone and type it. This is 
respective levels create the density of visuals that transport listeners to tranquil flows like this. But as I can see, it has touched the core of the song. As the person who wrote it, it's about the person who passed the thing. And this lady is inviting him to come back. But that part couldn't recognize by this. And even, I think it's not a, uh, something to be excited because even Human can't recognize it. So when I gave this point to uh, around 10 people, only one or two recognized the meaning. So it's natural. But why, why I wanted to demonstrate this is this can be used as a support tool. So again, we come back to that. We need human intervention. I don't know for how long, but. At the moment, we need human intuition. With a proper blending between us and the AI tools, I think we can produce the best results. So sometimes, when you get the, what you call as the writer's block, let's say, you have some idea, but you don't know how to express this. For such things, this comes very handy. And sometimes you can get new ideas also. But, we have to give the proper input to get the real thing. Okay, if you have finished that, you can experiment with that later with different different approaches. For example, you can say something like this. Repeat this. You can analyze it. Repeat the review. Uh, consider this is written with someone who passed away in memory. Right? Now we are saying that use this point also in the review. Now you can see this adding that part also to my review. Right? That's where the human intuition is. Again next up. And we have to, one of the main languages used to program here was called as Prolog. 
Recording in pro recording stopped. So uh, recording in progress. In uh, you have to write the long pro prologue code to get the solution for this. Right? But now it's like you just copy and paste this problem. I still don't know how it gives the answer. Is it by logical reason more? Uh, because this problem is a famous problem now. So whether they are copying the answer. Because I am going to change it and see. But you can, this can solve problems of this nature. And the third one is from a from a physics paper. Where a girl is tossing a coin. And you ask to calculate the time it takes to fall into a wave. Typical area of question. And you can copy and paste that problem also and see. Provided that chat GPT is working, I know it's working. If you face part, half of the problem, it will ask for more clues. But if you face the whole problem, it will give the
So that's a good fight in here. Now, without doing it, all the work. So she asked it to solve and it gave the answer. What does that mean? It's from the knowledge. Like some of our students also. So what we can do is we can change the problem and give. Okay, what about other things? You can try now many things, right? Lesson plans. You can give the duration. Can you prepare a lesson plan with interesting interactive activities for one hour? For undergraduates, you have to do enough prompting. You can try it to see. To teach AI whatever subject that you like. And even for well-known subjects, syllabus is also.
Uh, but now it doesn't help me. I also noted that today when I was trying to solve some problem, rather than giving me the solution, it tells me how to do it. That also good. Rather than giving me the answer directly. But then when I type, give me the answer, it gave me the answer. But I can check whether the answer is correct. But with the commercial version of ChatGPT, they are paying me information. Uh, you can do all these clustering and everything. You can just put the file there and ask it to find people, students and many things. So that is where I can see. Okay, since the time is passing, shall we go back to the presentation? Hope you can try more things and then, more importantly, share whatever the, the interesting things that you come across in the WhatsApp group. Then everybody can learn. Because these not only teaching something, because I don't think I can teach the capabilities of ChatGPT. I have a very big list in one of the slides. I will share this presentation with you. But uh, I am not going to go through it. Because it's a long list. But list is not important. What is important is what I do is whenever I get some crazy idea, I just go and check it whether the chat GPT can do it. So that will sometimes reveal different dynamics. So then you can share it. Which I use for many things. 
What can you tell about the color of A and B? This is one of our weaknesses, right? You can see what type of thing is like this. Because as humans, we always measure things relatively.
politics of the Ottoman Empire to be celebrated on some time. Pope, you know the famous case where once the Buddha was taken to court. When they said, idiot or something. When they made search, when you search, idiot, the first page comes is And so I search, idiot pair of idiot. You can do it with me. Then ethical considerations, lifelong learning, right? Because we have to always keep. Let me have to be very careful. Should we be very careful? Not to be too much. But still, we are learning. Dependency on technology. That also something bad. Now, for example, when you get things, you see sometimes you have been this can go down. For example. I can draw, do painting, but because of laziness, sometimes now I do give the basic sketch, and the textures you can get from something else. So will that take my ability down? Then how to control the quality, cost, and infrastructure? Cost means today morning I was trying to find. Some software do plus 10 is for free. Most of them give you some credit time when that is finished. Right. Only this tool life out. But unfortunately that also not working here, but you can try it at home, it will surely work. Uh, and changing curriculum means in this subject area. Right. Day by day change. When term help time will be. What is that? Sometimes you can get addicted. There was a time I got addicted to chat GPT. Yeah, I was trying various things last year. And job displacement. Some of the jobs, even though these AI tools are not there, some jobs will vanish from the for sure. Because they can be now done using even Google Sheets. So those kind of challenges are there. And if I summarize this slide, what is our role? As I mentioned, one of the main things that you can draw from AI is we can, if we can generate some personalized teaching, or if we can create a personalized learning environment, I think uh, that is one thing that we can have. So people talk about teacher center and student center. What I feel is, it is not centered around someone, but it should be a collaborative work, especially in universities. Right? We should work together and learn together. So, every time we have work collaborative and learn. Right? For example, last week also I am giving a lesson from one lecturer, young lecturer in Fine Arts about Nipati and Sindhu, how to write them correctly. So, you have to always uh, work in collaboration. And there's a very nice talk. You know this person? This picture also was created using AI. Can you recognize this person? Have you heard about Khan Academy? Now one of the greatest resource pool in the world. He has a nice video on uh, how AI could save, not destroy education. Please go and listen to that. You can just search it and find it. <coughs> he nicely put together. I think many people who have some fear about AI will get rid of that if you listen to it. Right? So please listen to that to make this complete. His name is Sir Khan, or Khan Akhil. So, <coughs> AI, as we all understand, can redefine the education. It can create new avenues.
balance also. So, in the digital dance of minds and machine, all life parts were much for sunshine. So, we can create unseen capabilities, which were not there earlier in this environment. But we have to make sure that we use that not to make our lives easy, but to get the main objective of the uh, teaching learning process. Especially in universities, we should have that individualized approach. Because we don't know whom we are going to create. It's not like sending all of them through the same measuring technique. Exam will be there. That's a different thing. But we have to help the other students also to achieve their dreams. Okay, so I hope I try to put something into your head. I'm sorry about that software which I have work. Uh, but I hope you can try it and see how you can use it for assessing students in a different way. Because you can get a different insight from such things. Okay, thank you very much. And now you can discuss. Time is over. If you have anything to tell, you can you can give around five minutes. Or you can put them in the chat if it's what's up. So what uh, application did you use to make the music videos and you know to comprehensively get those? No, to get the melody, I use that five colour formula. Oh yeah, okay. And then I'll show you the We had a session and uh, learned a lot of new things. Thank you for the interesting session. And, oh, you and let us give a close word. Thank you all for your joining. And let's meet uh, next month for another session.